Hey, good morning. Welcome, CP Comp. And uh, this message is for whether you are virtual or whether you're in class, because you're doing the same thing every day as the other people that are not here. Um, so last week, we looked at comparison and contrast, and we did that all week. Um, and uh, it's important for us to kind of be dialoguing about comparison and contrast. We also kind of wrapped up raising the sun. Um, so this is kind of our lessons. Now, on my screen, they're grayed out because they, they aren't meant to go live until Monday. But let me just walk you through this. Um, and I tried to make this as clear as I can. And I already see some typos and you take care of eventually. <laughs> but uh, today we begin our comparison contrast summer reading essay. And as I warned you last week, you need to have your book. You don't have a book. And by this point, shame on you, number one. And number two, get a book and make sure it has not been done for school before and that it's on grade level. Your first order is to choose two characters for your novel that you want to compare and contrast. So this day is really kind of some preliminary. And you might have done a little bit of this in class, but now we're asking you to officially write it down and submit it. So below in a fresh Google Doc, write the title and the author of the book. There's two characters you want to compare. Then there's three areas of comparison or contrast for these characters. These three areas will be the same for both characters. It can be a combination of comparison and or contrast. One of the things you'll want to think about is how this comparison and contrast contributes to the story. Do these similarities or differences drive the tension of the story, drive the plot forward, develop the character's relationship into an unbreakable bond? Whatever idea you come up with will be forged into a thesis of the paper. List on your Google Doc what you think this comparison and contrast does to the story. After you finish with this, begin looking for quotes that support the comparison and contrast. It does not need to be in this Google Doc, but we'll plan to tomorrow's lesson. Be sure to note the page number. Um, and so I have some documents here, but you really don't need to read these at this point. This plays really into more of the lesson tomorrow. Then tomorrow, as we build on this, and this is why, if you have time, you should be gathering quotes on Monday. Today, you're going to continue gathering quotes to support your characters in the areas of comparison and contrast. You will need three quotes for each character. And Ms. Myers, this is the part that I think that really hangs up students. If you did not read your novel in a very long time, or you're picking a novel that you say, oh, I'm just going to spark notes it, doing this becomes real hard. Yeah. Because you need to have read your novel, all right? which is one of the reasons I like this assignment as a teacher because it really says, did you do your summer reading or not? This is where you kind of prove your mettle in this. So in a fresh, you're going to list the three areas of comparison and contrast, and under each area's compar character's area of comparison and contrast, you're going to place a quote associated with the character in the areas of comparison and contrast. So as I'm describing Miss Myers in my novel, uh, and I counter, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, uh, description of her, I'm going to look for a passage that describes her. And then likewise, Mr. Herzog, if he's in my novel, I will look for a passage that describes her. This does not need to be a quote that someone said. It can be, I mean, it can be dialogue, but it can also be narration. All right. And you're going to submit that today. If you do this and get this done by today, uh, which you should have it done by today, if you read your novel, where it's going to come uh, become a little bit more complicated if you're reading a book that you really didn't read. And that's going to make it difficult. By day three, four, and five, you are working on skeletons. And yes, we are bringing the skeletons back. And since you're familiar with the ones with writs, these are just a development and modified to support our comparison and contrast. And so you're going to make a choice. Are you going to do a point by point or a block? They are the same essay. They're just a different way of comparing. And you're going to have to choose which one you feel. Are you trying to give an overview of the character? You're looking at three points of the character. Are you really trying to highlight their similarities and differences, and therefore you're going to go point by point? We've talked about this in class, and you're going to make a choice as to which one you do. And here is where Chicago style is going to come into play because your citation of quotes needs to be done according to Chicago style. And so there's a little video that Taylor has, uh, Mr. Taylor has put together. Plus, I put an example PDF up here, so you really have no excuse not to do it. So make sure you take a look at those. 
I'm going to hop into one of these skeletons real quickly, and they're kind of the same, but you'll see that if you're doing a block, I really clarified how this, the topic sentence should be set up. And you'll see that your introductory sentence to the first point of comparison, context, quote, and citation, explanation, these are all the same. And then there's some things that are unique to the block. And the same way, if we hop over and we look at the point by point, there is some stuff that's unique to the point by point. You will choose either point by point or block to do. If you're going to do point by point, you will need to do three skeletons. If you're going to do block, you need to do two. And I kind of clarified that if you're doing block, you don't need to have your first skeleton do this day. If you're doing point by point, your skeleton, your first skeletons do this day. And then um, the second day, if you're block, you need to have, you need to submit a skeleton the same way with the point by point. And then day three, you need to do your last skeleton. So pretty straightforward. Again, this is assuming you read it. And I'm sorry this is a bit long-winded, but I think this is important because this week is a writing week for us. It is our sec is our third major writing and the last major writing that's on the marking period. So you want to make sure you give it your best shot. Uh, and that you're following. If you have any questions, please email us, message us, and remind us.